show, we'll be putting everything you've learned from the past week to the test to find out just how much of a people watcher you really are. I'm Richard Wiseman, Professor of Psychology at the University of Hertfordshire. I've written many books and conducted hundreds of experiments about the way we behave. For this show, I've pulled together a crack team of experts who are going to show you why we do what we do. This is Dr. Jack Lewis. He's a neuroscientist. What he doesn't know about the human brain isn't worth knowing. Emma Kenny is a qualified psychologist and behavioural therapist. She can read a face like a book. And this is Sarah Clark. She's also a psychologist and an expert on human behaviour. Throughout the series, they'll be out and about on the streets of Britain playing devious tricks, carrying out clever experiments, demonstrating psychological techniques and generally getting up to no good in order to show you how you can use our knowledge in your everyday life. Together, we are the People Watchers. This past week on the People Watchers, we've been out and about with our hidden cameras to try and show you why we do what we do. But I hope you are concentrating, because today the experiment includes you. We're going to see just how much of a people watcher you really are with 15 multiple choice questions. You might want to go and grab a pen and paper, and while you do, the rest of us will look at some lovely scenery. Researchers suggested that exposure to outdoor settings such as the countryside can significantly improve concentration and productivity. And while we can't actually take you there, simply imagining yourself in the scene might just help get you in the right frame of mind. OK, are you sitting comfortably? I want you to keep score as you go along, because at the end of the quiz, I'll be revealing what your score says about you. So gear up and get ready for the People Watchers Friday Quiz. We all need to ask for small favours from time to time, whether it's borrowing a neighbour's lawnmower, asking for a lift, or getting a babysitter. Now, it's not surprising to think that we like people that help us out. But some psychologists think that exactly the opposite is true that when someone actually carries out favours for us, they end up liking us more. Now the People Watchers decided to test this rather strange sounding theory. Earlier in the week, Jack posed as an inept shop assistant to see if someone doing him a favour would actually make them like him more. Is this psychological effect known as A, the Franklin effect, B, the Cunningham effect, or C, the Mansell effect? While you're trying to figure it out, let's see if it really works. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go and serve something, you know. Do you, would you mind, like, just finish this off for me and bring it over? It's my first day and I'm, I don't want to get in trouble. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. This is a bit strange. Cheers. I'm sorry to do that. Well, she's done it helping Jack out of a potentially sticky situation. Surely he won't want to impose on her again, will he? I know this is going to sound ridiculously cheap, but could, could I ask one more favour? Just down the corner, down that corridor on the right-hand side, on the deep freeze, there's a, a few cans of like, cat food. Right. Would you mind bringing it over? So she helped Jack out twice in the space of a few minutes, even though it was Jack's job. Let's ask her what she thought of him. So first of all, staff helpfulness. Nine. Nine out of ten. And staff friendliness. Uh, nine. She awarded him a whopping nine out of ten for helpfulness, even though it was her doing most of the helping. There you go. And if you chose answer A, the Franklin effect, then congratulations. It was the former president who said, he that has once done you a kindness will be more ready to do you another than he whom you yourself have obliged. So next time you need a favour, don't hold back. The more you ask, the more you'll be liked. How honest are you? Would you ever take something from a shop without paying for it? Would it matter if there weren't any possible witnesses around? 
A recent American survey asked people who, out of their friends, family and colleagues, would be most likely to go to heaven. And a massive 87% of people placed themselves at the top of the list. But is our behaviour really so saintly? We decided to find out by giving people an opportunity to do the right thing and seeing what happened. The people watchers wanted to discover just how honest the British public really were by secretly filming a newspaper honesty box. But how many of the customers actually paid for their newspaper? Was it A, all of them because we're an honest bunch, B, half of them because there's good and bad in all of us, or C, just one of them because we'd probably all get away with it if we could? Let's see, shall we? Great. Our first customers and they've paid. Maybe we've misjudged just how honest people really are. Then again, maybe not. Sadly, the correct answer is C. Only these initial two girls actually paid for the newspaper they took. It looks like the British public aren't very honest after all. Almost everyone will tell you they're an honest person. But as our experiment showed, even when it's something as simple as taking a newspaper, that's not necessarily the case. Each year, every adult in Britain gives an average of £200 to charity. But what are some of the factors that make us feel especially charitable? If a stranger came up to you in the street and wanted to use your mobile phone, would you let them? How about giving them money for the bus? Would it make any difference if they're a man or a woman? We decided to find out if the British public thought it was better to give than receive. Jack and Emma set out to discover whether us Brits were still an altruistic bunch. But how many of the three people Emma asked agreed to lend her their phone? Was it A, one person, B, two people, or C, all three people? I need to call my friend. I'm locked out and I'm just hoping they've got a... Oh, do you mind? I've got to be one second. Thanks. Do you know what? I've asked about 15 people. Excuse me. Can I borrow your mobile for one minute? Literally, can stand just trying to get in there and I'll watch me do it. Oh, Thanks. Sorry, I've just seen you texting. Well, that's two, but can Emma make it three out of three? I'm locked out of my flat. I need to call somebody to come and open it up and put the bar on it. I'm just making a phone, one phone call. I'm, you can watch me do it. I'm not going to run off or anything. I've literally got no bag. I've come out. I've gone to the shops down there. My friends come out and bolted it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. She can. So if you optimistically chose C, all three, then well done. It just goes to show we really are still a thoroughly generous nation. As long as you're female, it seems. Excuse me, my, my phone's died. Could I borrow yours to make a very quick call? Excuse me, my phone's died and I really need to make a quick phone call. Could I borrow yours just for a sec? My, my phone's out of batteries. Could I borrow yours very quickly to make a quick call? No. Ah. Because being female really did make a difference in how altruistic people were, however bizarre the request. Can you just paint my lipstick on? Would you mind? <laughs> what is it? Is that? And then, yeah, can you put it back in as well after it? I, yeah, I can't believe it's over. Yeah. Turn to your arm. over. So it seems the British public are far more likely to help a woman than a man. So next time you're in need of assistance from a total stranger, get a woman to ask for help. So what's the best way of getting someone to do you a really big favour? Well, one approach is to use the foot in the door technique. The basic idea is they're far more likely to do you a big favour if they've already done a small favour. But how far can you push it? Could you get people to donate their valuable time or dress up in a silly costume simply because they've already agreed to something far less? Earlier this week, Jack was trying to convince passers-by to put on his ridiculous tree outfit to promote his fictional eco website. Unfortunately, there weren't many takers. Would you wear this tree outfit for me and say some words to the camera? No way. Why not? Why not? I just want you to say, uh, saving the planet makes me feel tremendous. <laughs> I ain't that. I ain't that. No, you're not doing that. No. But it's, it's a